بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر and today something last about the registers all right that is what that is the universal shift register and once we study this so we are done with what with uh, the topic of registers okay universal shift register this is something of importance of practical usage all right so uh, in this video also I will be taking a little help of my notes because these circuits are a little complicated and difficult to draw as you saw in the previous video so you don't have to mind that and well if these questions come in your paper so that is really a bad luck for you because remembering these circuits is quite difficult so universal shift register why is this called universal because it has something universality and what is that that it it has the bi-directional feature that we studied in the last video it is bi-directional plus it also has another capability of parallel loading parallel loading that means the parallel input all right so this is universal shift register right now bi-directional the previous video parallel loading a two or three videos behind so you know these two things individually and today I'm going to do what I'm going to combine them for you over here so uh, let me take a talk about the four bit so this uh, let's say we have four flip-flops first this is the first flip-flop I'm drawing them rotated all right this is the second flip-flop this is the third flip-flop and this is the fourth flip-flop we have uh, the input D let's say D D and D fine clear signal is provided to all of them first we draw these things that are common right so this is the clear signal this is the clear signal external clock pulse is also provided to all of them oh I'm sorry this is like a triangle right this shows what this shows the negative edge triggering Over here, we are not dealing with negative edge triggering or positive edge triggering or level triggering. The main concern is that we have four flip flops, right? These four flip flops will have outputs. Let's say this is A4, say A3, A2, A1. And why am I using this? Uh, uh, symbol of A so I can use output so that well we had it in the book so I used A so let's say we use output O so this is O naught this is O1 O2 O3 with O3 being the most significant bit and O naught the least significant bit typical convention now what do you have we also have multiplexers in this one we have four cross one multiplexer which means it has these four inputs right three two one and zero all right and the output of this multiplexer are connected to the input of the flip-flop all right this is the next four cross one multiplexer 4 cross 1 max you have the inputs 3 2 1 and 0 and this is connected to the input of the next D flip-flop similarly for this flip-flop let me draw it a little wider like this and straighter also so this is another 4 cross 1 max the inputs are 3 2 1 and 0 
and the final four cross one locks. Three, two, one, and zero. This is also a four cross one max. The output is connected over here. And similarly, the output is connected over here. Fine. Now four cross one indicates what? We have four inputs, we have one output. The four inputs are here. The one output is connected to the input of the flip-flop. And in and over here in uh, what do we call it? Multiplexer, we also have the select lines or the select variables. So let me show them as well. They are S1 and S0. And let me show them in this way. All right. These are the select lines. We have for all the four flip-flops. We have two select lines. You should know. If, if you're watching this video, it is already assumed and it is very clear that you know about multiplexers and flip-flops. Right, so this is as one as it's not. So I've drawn them in this way to just show a link like this, that this straight line is coming and they are connected to all. This absolutely does not mean that something from this first multiplexer is connected as the select line to this second multiplexer, all right? You can name it over here also, S1 and S0, S1 and S0, S1 and S0. They are the very same that are over here. All right. Now, what are these inputs? 3, 2, 1, and 0. So for that, I will have to take help of my notes, right? The third inputs in all the cases are the parallel, are from the parallel loading, right? These are over here. We have, this is input I, or wait. Let me just shorten it a little. So I need a little space over here. I have I3. Over here we have I2. Here is I1. These are the inputs, right? And over here we have I0. Fine. Now what do you have? What do you have? Let me clean this place. The duster doesn't clean it that perfectly. So we have a cloth for it. We have this I3. Now what are 2, 1 and 0? So 2 is most probably, no. 1 is the serial input for shift right. 1. This 1 is what? This is the serial input for shift right. In the bidirectional video, we represented this by dr. All right. And similarly, no, not in the, in the final, we have the second one for shift left. This two. This is the serial input for shift left which in the previous video we represented with a DL. Now what about the rest? So I'm drawing it from here, okay? The two is 0 and 1 are connected over here. 0 and 1. 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are connected and they are connected to A2 as well as to over here too. This two and to this output also. So draw it with me, all right. And if you have more and more colors, that is more and more clear to understand. Have a look at this connection, right? I hope you got it. The output two is connected to the inputs one and zero, and similarly over here two. All right. Now, what about the zero? This zero is connected to this one. This zero is connected to this one. All right, and it is taken from the output O3. Is it fine? Okay, zero is connected to one and it's given to O3, right? Now what remains? This multiplexer is done. Okay? Now you see over here, this 2 remains. So this 2 is connected to 0 of this and 1 of that. This 2, this 2 
is connected to zero of this multiplexer and one of this multiplexer and it's given to output O1 it's given to this output O1 all right and wh what remains this 2 and this 0 remain so this 2 and this 0 are combined and they are given to the output O0 yes this 2 and this 0 are combined and given to O0 so let me use blue color this 2 and this 0 they are combined or let me take it here and they are given to the output O0 so this is the circuit for what for the universal shift register okay now have a look how is it going to shift right how is it going to shift left how is it going to just store that data that depends on these select lines s1 and s0 these are the mode controls for this uh, register in the previous video we had a mode control m in this video we have s1 and s0 as the mode controls all right so let's say we draw it all right the mode control let's say we say about the mode controls so what are they they are s1 s0 and depending on the values of s1 and s0 what is the register operation so we are going to write it over here register operation all right so let's say we have combinations for which I'm using colors okay zero 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 one 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 and one zero no sorry one zero and one one zero 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 one one zero and one one fine okay now if it's a zero zero if s1 is zero and s1 is zero and s0 is zero so what do you have At the multiplexers this zeroth input is connected right this zeroth input is connected this zeroth input is connected and this zeroth input is connected to the output so what do you have this input is connected to D flip-flop which is again connected over here have a look we don't have something to do with this one because it's not connected to the output now have a look for this O2 this O2 comes down back again to the zero similarly O1 comes back to zero and similarly O0 comes back to zero so all of them are connected and they are going to repeat itself let's say let's say we had previously we had the bits one zero one one over here so have a look when the switch control zero zero are provided so this is connected this one will come back at the input this zero will direct this one to the data input and this d will again give the one at the output you need to know this for the d flip flops all right clock pulse the d input and the next state so if the clock is zero whatever we the value of d the previous state is retained if clock is high d is zero the output is zero if clock is high d is high the output is high so have a look d is high output is high similarly over here d will be low so the output will be low d would be high d would be high so it means in this case the register operation is we have no operation we have no change and this no change means we hold the previous values we have holded whatever previous values we had previously now for 0 1 what do you have have a look when s1 is 0 and s0 is 1 now what do you have this one would be connected right this one would be connected this one would be connected and this one would be connected would be directed to the output and this one all right so in this case what do you have serial input for shift right so serial input for shift right was what i told you that we entered the lsb over here 
So let's say we have the number 1011. Let me remove it from here. Or let's say we have 1010, right? 1010. So in this case, what do you have? You load the most significant bit, least significant bit into this very uh, multiplexer. Uh, sorry into this you have to load it so for this for that you have to uh, provide a one at this data input right you have to provide this zero sorry this zero this zero is provided at the data input so which is stored over here and now this is connected to what to <coughs> the output is also connected to the uh, one over here so this one is connected uh, directly to the output so the same zero can appear over here also but that would happen in the next clock pulse all right initially you gave it a zero this is stored at the first flip-flop now you give it the next bit the next bit that is one if you give it this one so this one is given over here and as this output is connected over here so this zero this zero is shifted over here and the new one is stored over here fine this is for the second clock pulse for the third clock pulse we provide the other zero the next zero when is entered over here so have a look this output the green color it is connected over here at one and this one is being directed to the output so for the third clock pulse this zero moves into this flip-flop this one moves into this flip-flop and the new zero that was introduced comes over here okay is that fine now for the fourth clock pulse you introduce the final one all right so now have a look for the red color this output is connected to one the input one of the multiplexer and the input one is being directed to the input of the flip-flop so which means for the next clock pulse this zero is shifted to the final flip-flop this one is shifted over here this zero is shifted over here and the input that we have provided is stored over here and n number of bits here require n number of flip-flops now this is just like the serial input mode of the registers that we have seen in a very great detail over here we also saw it in a detail but over there we have also seen it okay now to extract it so we have seen over there now you require n minus one bits because this is already available at the output so you shift it to three more clock pulses as you have three more uh, bits remaining so that will give you the output for serial output you need to just see that video we're not talking about the output over here we are basically talking about the input so when this is zero one so what do you have you have the shift right mode shift right mode of the register isn't it so yes and you are providing the lsb at dr okay lsb at dr okay fine now what do you have now if you have a, a one zero so let me remove these first fine okay when s1 is 1 s0 is 0 so this 2 would be connected fine you know these from the basics of your multiplexers if you don't know well you should be doing them at this stage if you're watching this video but if you don't know so you can watch it i've already uploaded videos on that now this what happens 2 is connected so this 2 for simplicity if you check this 2 is connected over here 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 where do we have to provide it so if you have a look here we have this 2 is over here so over here we have to provide the serial input that we want to shift to the left all right so let's say we want to store a number 1100 so for this now at this position you have to provide the most significant bit so let's say when the first clock pulse arrives at the serial input i am providing this first most significant bit which has been stored all right now have a look this output have a look through this way is connected to two over here 
and this 2 is being directed at the output. So which means this 1 will appear over here. Now for the next clock pulse we provide the next 1 over here and this previous 1 is shifted 1 place to the left. Alright, now have a look. This output O1, look for the green color, is connected to 2 over here. This 2 is being directed to the output. So, what do you have? For the next clock pulse, we introduce the next bit in order, 0, 0, so this 0 comes here. This one is shifted over here, and th over here, the one that we have that is shifted over here. So, these are three clock pulses. For the fourth clock pulse, you provide the LSB. All right, LSB is provided at last. So what do you have a look over here? This O2 is connected, green color, to this 2. This 2 is being directed to the output. Output is uh, being fed into the input of the flip-flop. So this one for the fourth clock pulse is stored over here. This one comes over here. This 0 comes over here. And the final 0 that we provide is stored at the final flip-flop. So which means n bits require n clock pulses. We know that, but let me write it uh, to be stored serially. And n minus 1 clock pulses to be extracted serially. Now this is what we already know, but I was just writing it to fill this place a little. So this 1, 0 we have what? We have the shift left operation and in shift left you provide the most significant bit at the serial input that at D L. Is it fine? Alright, now the final case that is 1, 1. So for 1, 1 let's say I remove this, this, this and this, right? So when S1 is 1 and S0 is 1. So in this case what do you have? The final output would be connected that is D3. This is D3. Uh, sorry, input 3. This and this. So the third is being directed. And for the third what do you have? Have a look I3, have a look I2, have a look I1, I0. So in this case which means we are directly loading the register and the directly loading is called parallel loading of register which means whatever bits you want to store at whatever position you just provide it over there let's say if you want to store 1011 so so let me write it over here if you want to store 1011 right 1010 let's say 1010 so you provide the most significant bit at the most significant position that is 1 and I, at I2 you provide a 0, at I1 you provide a 1, and I and not you provide a 0. So have a look, this 1 would be directed over here and would be stored over here. It will also be available at the output. This 0 comes over here, this is stored available at the output. This 1 is directed to the input of the flip-flop and it's out, available at the output. Oh, this 0 is connected over here, so this is available at this output. If you have parallel input, parallel output, so you are providing it directly, and these are available over here if you have this as a parallel output. So which means we are parallel loading this register in the mode when S1 and S0, both the controls are high. And what do you have in this case? Uh, MSB you provide at I3, the LSB you provide at I not. So this I discussed for 4 bits. For 5 bits you can have again in the similar way. So that's all about universal shift register. That's all about registers as well. Alright. So see you in the next lecture with simple as possible. And till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And also you do me a favor, you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And till the next lecture, take care of yourselves. And I believe I said it once. So, goodbye.